Hello everyone. In this video, let's discuss about mountain peak sequence. Let's go for the problem statement. Given an integer value 3, consider the first three natural numbers 1, 2 and 3. These are arranged in the following ways 2, 3, 1, 1, 3, 2. In both of these arrangements, the numbers increase into a certain point and then decrease. A sequence with this property is called a mountain peak sequence. For example, here if they are given the input value as 3, I have to consider 3 values starting from 1 up to 3 numbers. This can be permuted in 6 ways which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. Out of these 6 ways, there are only 2 numbers which looks like a mountain peak sequence. How does a mountain looks? It increases and then it decreases. That is why they have given the number increased to a certain point and then it decreases. When you go for 1, 2, 3, it increases. 1, 3, 2. From 1, it is increased, increased to 3 and then from 3, it has been decreased to 2. That's all. So, it is a mountain peak sequence. When you go for this number, from 2, it has been decreased and from 1, it has been increased. So, it doesn't look like a mountain. From 2, it has been increased to 3 and from 3, it has been decreased to 1. So, it looks like a mountain peak sequence. From 3, it has been decreased to 1 and from 1, it has been increased to 2. So, that it does not look like a mountain peak sequence. From 3 to 1, it has been decreased. So, it does not look like a mountain. So, there are two numbers which looks like a mountain peak sequence. So, I should get my output value as 2. This is the question. I hope you are clear with the question. Given an integer n, write a program to find the remainder of the mountain peak arrangements that can be obtained by rearranging the numbers 1 to up to n when divided by mod. The mod value they have given the sample input or output. Let's check that. Input format. One line containing the integer value. So, the input which I am going to give is nothing but just an integer value. Output format. An integer m giving the remainder of the number of mountain peaks arrangements that could be obtained from 1 to n is divided by mod value. The mod value what they have given is nothing but the constraints. 10 power 9 it is not 10, 109 it is 10 power 9 plus 7. So, here n less than or equal to 10 power 9. So, I have to divide the value by 10 power 9 plus 7 that I have to do mod value with this number. Fine. Let us go for sample input and output. So, they have given 3 values. So, from this 3 value I can say only 2 arrangements because if I give the value as 3, 1, 2 and 3. So, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. So, out of this 1, 3, 2 and 2, 3, 1 is the only 2 numbers which forms or which looks like a mountain peak sequence. So, 2 modulus 10 power 9 plus 7 the answer is 2. I will get my answer is 2. Let us go for the next input. So, 4. So, when the input is given as 4, I have to take 4 numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. This can be permuted in 24 ways. Out of those 24 ways, only 6 number looks like a mountain peak sequence 1 2 3 4 sorry 1 2 4 3 from 1 increasing to 4 and then it has been decreasing then this number 1 3 4 2 from 1 it has been increased to 4 and then it is decreasing and then here from 1 to 4 it is increasing and 4 to 2 it is decreasing from 2 to 4 it is increasing and then it is decreasing from 2 to 4 it is increasing and 4 to 1 it is decreasing and from 3 to 4 it is increasing from 4 to 1 it is decreasing so these are the 6 numbers which is for, which look like a mountain peak sequence and I have to perform modulus operation with 10 power 9 plus 7. My answer is 6. This is the question. I hope you are clear with the question now. Let's go for the logic of the program. The logic is very simple. If you give me input value as 1, one number I have to take. So, 0 possibilities. If you give me input value as 2, 2 numbers I have to take, 0 possibilities. If you give me input value as 3, so there are 3 numbers I can form. So, from 1, 2 I can take. I am going to add one number called 3. Now, the point is where am I going to place the number 3? So, the number 3 can be placed after 2 or before 2. That is the only one logic which I have to keep in my mind. So, the number 3 can be placed after 3 and before 3. If I place after 3, it does not look like a mountain peak sequence. So, I am going to place it before 3 which is 1, 3, 2. This number looks like a mountain peak sequence and take the reverse of this number. 2, 3, 1. So, these are all the two numbers which looks like a mountain peak sequence. I hope you are clear with the logic. So, the output for this question, the input value is 2. Now, when I go for the input value, 4. So, when I go for 4, how many numbers I can take? 
1, 2, 3, 4 numbers I can take. Previously, I have done for 1, 2, 3. So, for this number 1, 2, 3, how many numbers are possible? Only 2 numbers are possible. So, 1, 3, 2 and 2, 3, 1. So, only these 2 numbers are possible for the input value 3. So, remember carefully, where can I place my 4? The 4 can be placed only after 3 or before 3. After 3 or before 3. After 3, if I place, it doesn't look like a mountain peak sequence. I'm going to place it before 3. So, it becomes 1, 2, 4, 3. So, this looks like a mountain peak sequence. When this looks like a mountain peak sequence, so one more order which is the reverse of the number. 3, 4, 2, 1. So, this is also mountain peak sequence. Now, the hint is nothing but where can I place the last number 4? So, that depends upon the previous answer. For 1, 2, 3, how many arrangements are possible? 2 arrangements are possible. If 2 arrangements are possible, what are those numbers? 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1. 1, 3, 2 and 2, 3, 1. Now, I am going to add one number extra called 4. Where can I place the 4? The 4 can be placed after 3 and before 3. In this sequence, I can place after 3 and before 3 also. Both looks like a mountain peak sequence because I have got this answer from the previous mountain peak sequence. Now, in this case, where can I place 4? The 4 can be placed after 3 or before 3. So, these two numbers also looks like a mountain peak sequence and I have to add with these two values. So, the logic is very simple. For the input value 3, I know that I am going to get only two numbers. I am going to initialize the value as 2. So, the condition what I am going to write is, if n equal to equal to 1 or n equal to equal to 2, I will return 0. Return 0. If n equal to equal to 3, I will print, I'll like c out. It, instead of return, I will give c out 0. If n equal to equal to 3, I will take a variable called yes and initialize the value as 2. I will print the value as yes. What if n is greater than 3? If n is greater than 3, if n is greater than 3, what I am going to do? I am going to take a loop i equal to 1, i less than n minus 2. I am going to omit the previous two values, previous three values. Now, if n is equal to 4, what I have to do in the sense, I am going to take s equal to s into 2 plus 2. This is the answer. What is the value of n? n is equal to 4. 4 minus 2 which is 2. 1 less than 2, condition is true. If the condition is true, the s value is 2. 2 into 2, 4. 4 plus 2, 6. 6 will be stored in the variable called s. Why 6 is being stored in the sense? I know that for sure for the input value 3, 2 is my answer. For the input value 4, how am I going to derive? These two numbers are possible. If these two numbers are possible, I can place 3 in two ways for each and every number. So, I am going to multiply this number by 2. So, s into 2 plus 2. Why this plus 2? This number. So, 1, 2, 3. I can place only before 3, 4. Reverse this. 3, 4, 2, 1. So, for each and every number, these two numbers are possible. That is why I am adding with 2. That is all my answer. Now, let us take the input value as 5. So, for the previous value 4, how many arrangements are possible? 6 arrangements are possible. Okay, that 5 can be placed in 2 possibilities for each and every number. So, into 2 plus 2. Why that plus 2? So, I have number 1, 2, 3, 4. I know 12 arrangements are possible. Now, this 5 can be placed after 4 or before 4. So, when you go for after 4, that is not possible. I will place it before 4, reverse of this number. 4, 5, 3, 2, 1, which looks like a mountain peak sequence. So, plus 2. So, this is the logic for the program. S into 2 plus 2. So, for the input value 3, I'll get, I know that only 2 arrangements are possible. I'm going to print it directly. For all other numbers, into 2 plus 2, the previous value. So, the answer for each and every number depends upon the previous answer. For the input value 3, 2. Like, I'll take a different color now. Let's take black. So, for the previous value, so, if n value equal to 3, I know the answer is 2. If n value equal to 4, for this two possibilities, two other possibilities are possible. So, into 2 plus 2. Answer is 6. If n value equal to 5, previously I have got 4. 6 is my answer. For this 6, I will be having two possibilities plus two extra possibility. Answer is 14. So, this is the logic of the program. So, the logic I can say is nothing but if n value 1 and n value equal to answer is 0. If n value equal to 3, the answer is 2. We know how those three two possibilities are possible. If it goes more than 3. So, if n value is 4, previous value into 2 plus 2. That's all my logic. So, 
for n value 3, I've got my answer as 2 into 2 plus 2. That's all answer. If n value equal to 5, for 4, I'll be getting how many possibilities? 6 possibilities. I need to know what are the possibilities for 5. So previous value is 6 into 2 plus 2. So 14 is my answer. If they have given me n value equal to 6. If they are given n value equal to 6. So I can say for n value equal to 5, I've got 14 possibilities. For these 14 possibilities, I'll be having 2 extra possibilities plus 2. Answer is 14 into 2, 28 plus 2, 30 is my answer. So this is the logic for the program called mountain peak sequence. Hello everyone. In this video, let's discuss how to write a program for mountain peak sequence. Let's start with preprocess directive. Hash include iostream using namespace std. The execution of the program always starts from the main function. Let me give int main. Fine. Now let's check the sample input and output to get the input values. I'm going to get one integer value and I'm going to print one integer value. So let me get the input value from the user. And the constraint they have given us 10 power 9. So I'm going to declare uh, the variable as long int n. I have to get the input value from the user. Okay. After that, what I have to do? I have to check one condition, which is nothing but if n greater than 2. If n is greater than 2, I have a logic. If that is not, what I can say? Directly I can say the answer is 0. See out. The answer is 0. And I will close the, I will give it a 0. And I will close the main function. What if, if n is greater than 2? If n is greater than 2, I have to check one more condition, which is nothing but if n equal to equal to 3. If n is equal to equal to 3, how many possibilities are possible? Only two possibilities are possible. So I am going to declare it as a variable. And I am going to initialize the value as 2 for that. Okay. So if n equal to equal to 3, directly I am going to print the value yes. Because for the input 3, how many arrangements are possible? Only two arrangements are possible. What if the value is not equal to 3, which is greater than 3? For other cases, it, the answer is depends upon the previous value. If the input, input value is 4, the answer depends upon the previous value 3. So, for the input 3, I have got the value 2. For the input 4, what is the logic? Previous answer into 2 plus 2. Previous answer into 2 plus 2. For that, I am going to take a loop. If n equal to equal to 3, this is the logic. Else, the logic is for i. So, I am going to declare one more variable called i for the iteration. So, if i equal to 1 and I have to remove 3 values, right? What are the 3 values? 1, 2, 3. So, these 3 cases. If n equal to 4, only one time I have to iterate my loop. So, I have to remove 3 iterations. So, I am going to give the condition as i less than n minus 2 and i plus plus. So, for 1, it is 0. For 2, it is 0. For 3, it is yes value, which is 2. For 4, I am going to go for only one iteration, only previous iteration, which is 3 only I am going to check. So, for that case, I have given the condition i less than n minus 2. If that is the case, s equal to s into 2 plus 2. So, previous answer, s into 2 plus 2 is my answer. So, I have to go for the number of iterations. For n input value 5, the previous answer 4, I have got, I have stored in the variable called s, that into 2 plus 2. So, the loop has to be iterated. Once the iteration of the loop got over, what I have to do? I have to print the value of s. And remember one more thing, for each and every answer, that has to be divided by 10 power 9 plus 7. That was the thing we have done, right? So I have to give 10 power 9 value plus 7. So 10 power 9 plus 7 modulus, the answer should be uh, divided by this 10 power 9 plus 7. That should be my answer. After this, I have to print the value. After printing the value, I have to close the else case. So this is nothing but if condition got over and the else case I have closed here. So this is the logic of the program. The logic of the program is very simple. I mean sorry, the writing the program is very simple. The only thing is nothing but cracking the logic. If you crack the logic of the program, it is very easy to write the program in any of the programming languages. Let's save and compile the code. It is not passing few test cases. So I hope I have made some logical mistakes. I'll check what is the logical mistakes. Hashing live stream using namespace int n. Okay, long int n comma s equal to 2. And I'll take the variable i. I've got the input value. If n is equal to 3, I'll print the value. 
If that is not the case, I'll check the condition i equal to 1, i less than n minus 2, i plus plus, this is into 2 plus 2 modulus 10 power 7, and then I'll be printing the value of s. After printing the value of s, I have to close the else case. After closing the else case, I have to terminate the if condition. After that, I have placed this. That's all. So, logic is correct. Mm. Then, what is the mistake? Okay, maybe I have missed one zeros. That's all. I guess this is the logic mistake I have made. Still, it is not working. Yes, it passes all the test cases. That's what the logic mistake is. I have missed one zero because of the constraints. That's all. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe.